Welcome to the first look and flight with the MI-24. We'll have a look at the Petrovich AI, mostly the gunner, or rather the uh, command of the gunner from the pilot seat. We'll also have a look at the key setup for that, as well as a quick look at the manual weapons, cannon, possibly rockets and uh, machine guns for example. And we'll talk some about how the uh, computer calculated impact point works, or uh, similar to what it is actually. So let's get started. First things first, let's set up the controls to command Petrovich AI. So hit escape, GS controls, and search for what's called show hide menu. And set this to something on your joystick or throttle something that's easy to reach because you're gonna turn it on and off quite often. Second, go into the MI24P AI menu. As you can see here you still have a hide menu but you don't need to actually set it, at least not for uh, the kind of setup I'm using. Do however set down left right and up to a hat on your joystick is my recommendation at least or whatever you feel comfortable with. So those are the five keys we need to set. So show hide menu which is under MI24 pilot and menu down left right and up under MI24 AI menu. Once that's set you press OK. So what this does is if you press the show and hide menu we're bringing up the Petrovich control menu and hide it and show it. As you can see everything is red which means the weapon control systems are off and you can control Petrovich AI to set them to on. But you can also do it uh, partially yourself. So let's just uh, turn on what you can turn on from the commander seat and let's hide the menu and press backspace to hide the controls in your seat. Now let's zoom in on the weapons control panel. So let's turn the weapon control on. Let's turn the sight power on, which brings up the sight. Turn the sight distance to automatic, as well as Sight mode to automatic. Now, the MI24, unlike the MI8, actually has a computer to help you calculate distance with manual weapons such as the cannon, uh, external machine guns, rockets, and so forth. It's not, however, laser cal calculated as in the KA50, for example, or other modern birds. So, what it does is it knows your altitude to the ground through your uh, radar altimeter. It also knows your angle to the target. Uh, and from that it triangulates the distance. Uh, it works pretty well, but it doesn't work if your target is lower or higher than the ground you're above. So if you're flying on right above a mountain, let's say a thousand feet up, and your target is uh, two kilometers in front of you at sea level, it's not going to give you an accurate, uh, an accurate calculated distance to that. So just keep that in mind. Now let's have Petrovich turn on the weapons. So you do this by bringing up the menu and then pressing your hat or up key long. So just hold it in for more than half a second. Right, turning on weapons. You see it's now yellow and it will change color again in three minutes. Let's go over some other things while we, uh, while we do that. As you can see we have a compass or course angle which says 97 right now. So that's actually our uh, magnetic uh, course. This is extremely helpful. It's actually kind of like having a helmet mounted uh, device. You also see on the lower left here we have the angle. And that's the angle from the helicopter. So straightforward. 
left 10, 11, 12, and left 92, there, and then it goes over to right, right 90. You also have the angle up and down, that's on your right side, so minus 34 degrees, plus 35 degrees extremely helpful especially if you have a, 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 a manned gun so not the AI actually uh, co-pilot with you okay so let's hide the menu for now actually let's go over the countermeasures first so bring up the menu again and short left brings up the uh, countermeasure menu and you can hide it again, so short left, short left, short left. Now, setting the interval between two and four seconds is done by pressing up short. So up short, series, how many series will drop, four or 16, so short right. And going down, we'll choose which side you drop from, so both sides right side, left side, and holding down, we'll switch between flare and chaff, so you can't drop both at once, but if you think you have a radar missile inbound for you, you switch to chaff and you start deploying. So what I normally use is interval of 4 and a series of 16 when in a uh, hostile environment. It's very difficult to keep track of IR missiles and when they're fired, so just let those flares out. Right, short lift to hide the menu. And let's hide the menu again. You have a weapon selector. Just this one. And it's quite easy to use, unlike the MI-8, where you have to uh, set several different things. So for now, let's have a look outside. F2. So you can see we have guided missiles with us. We have rockets and we have machine gun parts. So fixed machine gun, 762 plus 12.7. As you can see now, weapons ready from Petrovich. So right now I've chosen machine guns, machine gun parts, 762 plus 12.7. One more press, it's just the 12.7, just the 762, and then we have the fixed cannon and rockets. So let's go back to missile off rather missile and off. Now I have this set to a uh, rotor in my throttle as well so I can switch it down the fly without looking down. And as you can see you actually have a good help here from what you've chosen. So fixed machine gun doesn't change with what you choose. It just says fixed machine gun so you actually have to know what you choose. Then it goes down to 30, that's your 30 millimeter cannon and to rockets. For Petrovich firing missiles, it should be in the off position and missile. That's when he can open the uh, the covers on the camera and begin uh, locking, or rather not locking, but pointing the camera towards target and guiding the missiles. So it's important to understand that the MI-24 cannot lock onto targets. The missiles are actually guided by the gunner all the way to the target, so you can't fire and uh, make a steep turn, because uh, Petrovich will miss. So let's take off and just have a quick look at the uh, fixed weapons. And you can see how I trim when I take off as well. The MI-24 is quite prone to, uh, to forward flight, so trim back and trim slightly to the right. And don't forget right pedal when you take off. And we're up. And let 
this. Pull up the gears. And transition into forward flight. The Mate 24 is actually extremely stable. It's not quite as flying on an airplane, of course, but uh, but not too far from it either, in, uh, in forward flight at least. Once you get into uh, different turns and a slower flight, it's a different story, but still a very stable helicopter. And, as with the other helicopters, set your trim button to something that's easy to reach. As you can hear and see, I just keep trimming a little bit in the beginning here. Since I have the uh, verbal joystick, I have the trim set to my pinky, uh, pinky finger, and it's a combination of an uh, axis switch and an actual button, which is why you can hear the uh, wheel brakes come on. Right, let's switch to machine guns. Let's go for the uh, 50 caliber or the 12.7 millimeter. And as you can see, we have the normal sight. We also have the one that moves around. That's the actual the uh, calculated point of the machine guns right now. But as I told you before, right now we're quite low above the ground. But the actual target point is lower. And we have a low fuel in tank number two. That's why we're uh, getting a warning. Nothing to worry about in this mission. So let's try and fire. Now, standard in the uh, MI24 is to have the uh, burst set to short. As far as the machine guns go, I prefer that to be medium or long actually, because they, uh, they need to do, uh, do a little bit more area effect most of the time, depending on what you shoot on, of course. So let's try another one. If you set the burst too long, you can just hold the trigger. So it's actually no more difficult than that. So that's for the, uh, the machine guns. Let's make another switch to just the 7.62s. And we can combine them to all the ones. And for me it's a pleasure and a frame rate killer. That's good to know. So if we change the bursts too long and we fire away, the frames are gonna drop pretty bad. Which is also reason to use short bursts with them. Right, so let's head over to the cannon. And let's set the bursts to short there. And we're on slow cannon fire rate. So that's a short burst with slow rate. Let's change it to quick. As you can see, it's a huge difference between slow and fast. So, the reason I like to switch between them is if you know or have a bigger target where you can uh, put more rounds in the target without actually risking missing as much, it's easier to have it uh, on the fast. If, however, you need to do a little bit more spray and pray, or if you're maneuvering hard, it's better to have it on slow for me, because I have the time to switch my sight or, or change direction or sight and distance between uh, when I'm actually firing, so I can spread a little bit more. And as you can see, because we have lots of different altitudes here between no mountains and hills, our sight is not all that accurate. 
if you are more level terrain it's usually a lot better and it does work very well most of the time it is something to learn uh, when you're this close to the targets it's just usually easier to use the uh, normal sight it's just the center one Let's have a look at Petrovich a little fast. So switch over to missiles. Bring up the AI menu. And we don't have any target station locked now, so I'll just go over the buttons a little fast and then we'll head into the H4 takedown mission and uh, have a look how it actually looks. Now it's worth noting that once Petrovich has the uh, doors open for the site, you should not turn too fast, uh, as that will uh, mess up the gyro, which means he'll uh, take longer to actually turn the site afterwards. So, once the site is up, short press up on the hat will make him look in that direction. As you can see, he's not ready to move the site yet either because I just uh, commanded him to, uh, to do it. His uh, doors aren't open, as you can see there. So if I want him to look over there. Now, if you can't move the side, it's either because you've turned too fast, too hard, uh, which means the gyro is a bit messed up, or because you just commanded him to look somewhere, which means he's still opening the doors and getting stuff ready. So what you do here is with a short press up on the hat, you command him to look in a general area. If there is a single target there, he will give you the information. It will let you know by text up here what he uh, found. For example, uh, target APC. If he found more targets, you will have a menu down here where you can choose the target. And you choose the target by going up and down on your hat. And once you're happy with the target, you press short right, and that'll uh, kind of lock it up. And as I said before, it's not actually locking the target, but it tells Petrovich to keep it in your sight, and you can fire the missile after that. Also, in order to fire the missile, you need to have the target within this small circle. You also get a tone when it's within the circle. Once you have fired, you don't have to keep the target within the circle, but remember to fly smooth, otherwise it would be too difficult to, uh, to maintain the target in the sight. That goes for both the AI and for human gunners. Now, if you do lock up a target and lock up the wrong target, or if you can't find the target in the list, do not press down on the hat. Pressing down on the hat will tell Petrovich to close the shutters and you will have to restart everything over and again. It will take maybe a minute extra. But if you do find the wrong target, just lock that target up by pressing short right and then redo the short up at a different place and see if you can find the target for you. Now it is an AI. Uh, it works really well. Sometimes human gunners are just better. It's easier to communicate, it's easier to say exactly what target there is, etc. But Petrovich works really, really well. Uh, in fact, so well that it's really, really fun to fly with it. So let's have a look at the, uh, the actual mission. Okay, one more thing before we get into the mission. Go to just controls and under MA24P pilot find the pilot launch countermeasures. This is the button you choose or uh, press when you uh, begin launching flares or chaff. So once that's done press OK and let's get started. So for the sake of the mission I'm gonna add rockets to our yeah, flight as well. And rearm refuel. Our armored platoons are on the attack. The artillery is ready to fire. You are 
fueled in arms. Request rearming. Into the air and good hunting. Well, let's command Petrovich to activate weapons from already. So, show hide menu, long up, turn your weapons on. And you can hide the menu gun. Hide the controls. And fire control on, sighting on, sight mode automatic, sight mode automatic. And with, if we have rockets as we do now, press and hold launcher arm. One is for the left one, and one is for the right pylon. Alright, let's get started. So, trim. Slightly back right. right rudder and take off and we crack the landing gear and start transitioning to forward flight and a little bit of trim and while we're at it bring up the Petrovich menu short left set interval to 4 Series by pressing short up, series to 16 by pressing short right. And we can leave it on both sides and flare of course in this case. And hide the menu. Now let's have a retrim. Now the MI24 is both stable and it's fast. Uh, as you can see already, despite all the weapons we have on the outside, we're still at already at 250 kilometers per hour down here I find it's often easier to head into something a little bit slower because it gives you more time to pick targets and to react to stuff so let's slow it down just a little bit So unlike the KA-50 for example, which is more of a attack scout helicopter where you can be uh, really sneaky, you go into the action slowly, peekaboo over a house or uh, trees or something, fire a missile, fire a uh, cannon, and then hide again. The Mi-24 is, is more of a lumbering beast, although at high speed as well. So it flies a little bit more like a fixed wing aircraft and it's a lot less hiding and uh, peekabooing. So you go into the action, keep your speed up, pick some targets, do the attack runs and fast out. So let's bring up Petrich. Enfield 7-1, enemy contact. Small ATGM squad moving to flank our forces to the west. Intercept and engage. And I press short up to tell him to open the doors and start looking for stuff. And so you can see he selected a tank. That's one of our own, so we don't want that. So we just tell him to start looking for different things again. Our second tank platoon. Let's get some, a little bit more altitude. So, small squad heading from the west. Let's see, let's look something like there. Yep. And tell them to look there. Short press up, and as it is now, it's far away enough, or far enough away actually, for him to only find one target. Still far out, we're getting tone, target in range. So keep the target within the small sight circle. And press and hold and fire. Now fly smooth, fly soft. Give Petrovich all the help he can in hitting the target. And it looks like a shack. So short up, pick a different target. Let's go up and down. Let's use the APC, short right, and fire, fly smooth. 
and the IFV is lightly armored next to him, so let's go to the 30mm cannon. See where he is. Hide the Petrovich menu. And charge destroyed. So as you can see, even though I slowed down, our attack run is still you know, about 250 kilometers per hour. And once you, by the way, once you switch to the third mm cannon, Petrovic automatically closes the shutter door, so you need to restart the, the timing for him moving the site. So let's go back to turning the cannon off. So off and missile. Now let's come around. the blade lights on. Forgot to turn those off. That's fine. Let's tell our uh, wingman to engage the mission and rejoin. So, enemy tank to short up. Can't move the site yet. Let's pick whichever tank we can actually. So that's short right to pick target. Fire. Fly smooth. Shack. And one more. Release flares. Take evasive action. Close the shutters by going short down. And let's switch to cannon again, a thermometer cannon. So there's really not much more to it. Uh, and this is a pretty early axis still. Uh, the MI-24 has been out a few weeks. And things will change. The countermeasure menu was actually added in the uh, one of the latest updates and I'm quite sure there will be more things in the future. So the cannon at the 30 mil can take out pretty much anything except for main battle tanks on the battlefield. So APCs, anything below APCs of course, but as far as tanks goes it's uh, a no-go really. It's too heavily armed. And as you can see I often use the zoom, especially when trying to uh, to be accurate. It also depends on your screen size. Of course I'm uh, fairly far away from a 24 inch screen, which will hopefully be updated in the future. But for now that's how it goes. So before we quit, let's switch to rockets. Well, let's do a rocket run. And let's head away a little bit, get some altitude, get some speed. As you can see, most of the tank platoon here is destroyed and burning. Actually, all of it, I think. Enfield 7-1. Artillery has shifted fire to H4. In at defensive positions. Now, the rest of the targets are over the airfield. Since I've flown the mission quite often, just as a practice mission, actually. I know there's some AAA there. It's a pretty long-range AAA. And it's high caliber, so very dangerous. I'll just go in with the rockets. And show you how they're uh, how they're used, how it's done. Which is why I'm actually grabbing some altitude here as well. And as you can see, the area we're above right here is flat, which is good for our uh, sighting mechanism. Also, you see the thick line here indicates the distance, calculate the distance to target. Or 
if you're within range. So let's head for the airfield. Let's see if we can actually get close enough for the rockets to do some kind of damage here. We trim for the speed. And AAA firing at us. Still out of range, though not by much. So let's try and get a few rockets off here. As you can see there, the sight is not always completely accurate, especially not in combination with if you uh, make small maneuvers while firing, especially at those ranges. Triple A is so close. And a little bit of a miscalculation on my side there. Too heavy on the controls. Also, the rear view mirrors are actually really, really useful for many things, both for uh, checking for fire for checking your uh, flare still releasing if you can't hear them. So let's just aim at the target here. Enfield 7-1. Armor Platoon 1 has reached its hold point. We'll begin direct attack on H4. So rockets, as minutes. per usual, are more area of effect weapons. Uh, I find them quite useless against heavy armor most of the time, but for uh, infantry and soft targets, buildings for example, they're quite useful. And of course, if you have a general area where you uh, where you don't know where the enemy is, perhaps an off force or something like that, it's extremely useful. All right, that's it for uh, this mission and tutorial. And uh, there will be more in the future, hopefully with uh, less time in between. And until then, take care, fly safe, and have fun.